Everything that matters needs a system and everything matters is one of my favorite sayings. To be successful, to survive, to thrive, and most of all, to maintain my sanity as a dentisting human. My name is Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman, and I'm excited to present Streamline the Implant Restorative Process. In this presentation, Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman, that's me, will share how to make patient-centered decisions when restoring posterior single teeth implants, removable overdentures, and fixed implant cases. This super fun course will give you actionable takeaways you can use immediately while focusing on how to deliver awesome implant care that benefits everyone in the practice, the team, the patient, and you. The checklist for success, the learning objectives. Checklist for success is one of my favorite phrases to use with my team, myself, my family, anyone who I'm working with on a project to be successful. So it's checklist for success is to review the differences between cement and screw retain restorations, discuss restorative decision-making for the single tooth implant in the posterior, identify common clinical challenges with fixed and removal overdentures, and review how to work with your lab to get optimal results. Now this variety or nacho plate of x-rays on the screen are from patients in my office that have implants through the ages and we can start delivering value right now. We can start working on this checklist for success right now. One of the things I encourage you to do is what I'm doing right now. Create videos for training, for sharing, for helping your team. All of us have new team members join our office. Wouldn't it be awesome for us to deliver a series of training videos to help them understand one of our processes in the office? And for you guys watching this course, it's great to have digestible chunks of learning opportunities or learning toppings so you can go back and listen to them. So let's talk about the difference between cement and screw retained restorations. Cement and screw retained restorations. And dentists love looking at x-rays because they share a story. So if we go to the upper right where one of my favorite patients has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 implants, 14 dental implants. The first two implants this patient had were ones that were placed in my residency program years ago. These are cement retained implant cases. These are Straumann tissue level implants. You may be watching this course as a dental student or new dentist. You may be, be a seasoned age dentist who's been practicing as long as I've been alive, which is currently 43 years. Tissue level implants were popular 15 to 20 years ago. The Straumann system was a simple system to use. So these tissue level implants you see in 19 and 20 area have worked out really, really well for all of this time. These were placed in 2005-ish, 15 years. These crowns are cemented on top of the solid abutments. So this system had a lot of good points simple to use, easy to understand. It also had some challenges. The solid abutments were not always retentive. Sometimes to me, they looked like not so great number 20 crown preps. Also, anytime you cement, so a golden nacho tip, if you're listening, the first thing you can take away from this lecture is cement can cause problems with the implant by getting stuck underneath the implant crown. Cement can get stuck near the implant bone and tissue and cause inflammation and bone loss and the dreaded word peri-implantitis. So cement can be a challenge. So anytime you cement in the mouth, you need to deal with cleaning up that cement. Now, many of us as dentists love to do this. What do you love to do as a dentist? You love to blame yourself. It must be my fault I didn't get all the cement out. But don't blame yourself because the crowns that get cemented onto implant abutments, the gum tissue around implants behaves differently than it does around teeth. So if cement gets stuck underneath the gum line on a natural tooth crown, the gum tissue responds differently. It will get inflamed, but you can use a curette, anesthetize the patient, and get that remaining gum tissue out. With implants, the delicate attachment between the gum tissue and the implant can be disturbed easily. So getting the gum tissue, the cement out, may require a flap to be made. So I have cemented many, many, many implant crowns with a lot of success. But I've also seen my own cases years later where the screw has loosened 
I need to dig for buried treasure. So one of the advantages of a screw retain restoration is if the screw loosens, it's easy to retrieve and treat that by removing the tooth colored uh, manhole cover on top of the implant. That's why I call it tooth color manhole or people hole cover on top of the implant, that composite circle and tightening it. For cement retained restoration, you have to go digging for that screw. I've gone digging and when I've removed the loose implant crown, I said, what terrible dentist would leave cement around this implant crown? Oh yeah, it was me. Because where does cement often get trapped? So one golden nacho tip, cement causes problems, can get underneath the gum tissue, cause inflammation, bone loss, and possible periimplantitis. Where's it common for cement to get trapped? On the buckle and the lingual, the buckle and the lingual, not a place where you'll see on the x-ray. So we can design our abutments, our custom abutments, to make it easier to clean up cement. But you'll see that's not always possible when the abutment line has to be subgingival. That being said, these implants, 19 and 20, that we're learning about right now, the difference between cement and screw retain restorations, it's all started right now, uh, is that they can be very successful, but cement challenges are present anytime you use cement in the mouth. So currently, I have not cemented an implant crown on top of a tooth in the mouth in over four years. So I have been dentisting since 2002. I've been involved with implants uh, since that time in my GPR. I cemented many cases as it went as popular, but I made a shift, I'd say in the 2010, 2011 time to doing more screw retain restorations. So there's differences between cement and screw retain restorations. Cement retain restorations do not have any access hole at the top of the crown. That can be an advantage for aesthetics. You have to be very concerned about cement getting trapped underneath the gum line. That can be a disadvantage. Screw retained restorations are retrievable, easy to maintain, and there's no cement because it's cleaned up in the lab or there's none present at all. We're going to learn about that as we go along. So that is the difference between cement retained and screw retained restorations. We'll become, we'll become back with this photo again in the future because you see all of these implants through the years. If we look at the patient on the upper right with the 14 implants, the Strauman implants from 2005, we have had bone level implants since then. We've had custom abutment and screw, custom abutment screwmentation style crowns. There's an implant bridge. Even since this photo, there's been more implants added to this patient's collection. But as we look to orient ourselves in for this course, you see so many implants through the years. As we go to the lower right, this is a stock abutment screwmentation crown. As you can see, the emergence profile, one of your favorite words. If you buy a boat, I think you might name it emergence profile. Dennis loves that word. The emergence profile of stock abutment screwmentations is not as good as custom abutment screwmentations. This is more of a custom abutment screwmentation crown. So my preference right now for Restorative decision making for single tooth implant restorations in the posterior is custom abutment screwmentation crowns. A custom abutment is made by lab in a computerized CAD CAM style. A zirconia crown with an access hole is placed over that custom abutment, cemented in the lab, cemented in the lab, and then it comes back to me with a seating jig and an access hole for me to seat so I don't have to worry about any cement challenges. As we go up, through this circle of implant life, let's look here in the middle where my uh, cursor is. And if you can't see the cursor, just look into the middle uh, portion of the x-rays, the upper left, where we see the implant amigos here. We have uh, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So look, 14 and 15 are stock abutment screwmentation crowns. The emergence profile is much boxier. They are existing. It doesn't mean just because we make changes doesn't mean the previous thing stinks. Let me say that again. Just because we make changes, adjustments, enhancements does not mean the thing that we used to do, do totally stunk. So just because I have a change from stock abutment to custom abutment doesn't mean that this totally stinks. It just means that I believe a better option is available. So here you see in the number 12 area, this custom abutment screwmentation crown. What is the advantage of custom abutments? What is the advantage of custom abutments? The ability to control the cement line and move it up, move it more 
even with the gum tissue or above the gum tissue. So what is the advantage of custom abutments? The ability to control the cement line and move it quote unquote up closer to the gum tissue, even above the gum tissue in cases that are non-aesthetic. So there's so much value and learning we can get from this one photo. Oftentimes I've been a CE presenter for over 15 years. A CE course is not about me going through so many cases so I can show off what I do. A CE course is about me connecting with you, the audience, in person, live, on demand, for you to get actionable takeaways. So what are the actionable takeaways we've learned so far? The difference between cement and screw retain restorations. The concern about cleaning up cement when we cement in the mouth any time. The different emergence profiles, stock abutment, Emergence profile screwmentation to me are not as good as custom abutment screwmentation prof, um, emergence profiles. What can custom abutments do then stock that stock abutments cannot do? Total control over the cement line. We can move it up equal equal distance to uh, equal equal with the gum tissue above the gum tissue. No aesthetic concerns. Um, one additional golden nacho piece I would like to say right now. So if you're listening to this right now, listen closely because this will prevent you from burning your nachos. This will prevent you from burning your implant nachos. When you plan an implant case for a single tooth restoration in the posterior, really anywhere, but let's focus on the posterior because we're going to talk about restorative decision-making in the posterior. Take a perio probe, very advanced procedure, and measure the missing tooth space. Measure from the gum to where the top of the tooth would be, from the gum tissue to the occlusal table, and write that number down. Type that number into your notes. And here is a system for you to be successful and less stressed. If you have eight millimeters or more of occlusal space, you will not have a problem with the size of the implant crown. I will put an asterisk with my words that an incredibly tall implant crown could present challenges if it's going to be 15 millimeters tall and the person's lost a lot of bone and gum tissue. But let's take most of the time, eight millimeters plus is not going to present any problems for the size of the crown. Six to eight millimeters is acceptable, likely also doable without any major adjustments. You may want to, as I do, modify, not drill down the opposing tooth, how I present that to the patient. We want to get the teeth on either side and above it all ready to meet its new neighbor, its new friend. So let's modify the teeth on either side and above it so they're smooth and we have enough room. My lab taught me that years ago. Great tip. If there's five millimeters or less of occlusal space, just because we can do a screw retained crown and it's a little fat tomato looking crown, and you can say that to the patient, if we don't get more space from the tooth above or below, we will have a little fat tomato looking crown, fat tomato looking crown, that's the visual. So in order to not have a fat tomato looking crown, we may didn't you do the following, adjust the tooth above it, contour it. That's easy. That's free. Remove some bone prior to placing the implant. So one of the things you could do is get more space by removing bone where the implant's going to be, be placed, as long as you're not too close to any anatomic structures. Uh, you may need to place a crown on the tooth opposing it. It's their mouth. It's their intercruzal space issue, not yours. You may need to do ortho, root canal, and crown. So evaluating the space, the missing space first, is so critical to success. So I hope you enjoyed this segment on streamlining the implant restorative process. My goal in making videos coupled with pictures here is for you to be able to share this story, but also consume it in any way. You could consume it while you're listening, watching, whatever. If you have questions, I'd love to hear them now if we're live. If you have questions and we're not live, just shout them at the TV. I'll hear them. Just kidding. I won't hear them. Just email me questions to salsa at dentalnachos.com. I love answering them. If, you if I can help you in any way in the future, just reach out to me at dentalnachos.com. And remember, streamlining the implant process, everything that matters needs a system and, every and everything matters, is going to make you a more successful and less stressed dentisting human.